Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole. If you're new here, welcome for your first time. So today is actually Monday. This will be uploaded later, but I am celebrating Margarita Monday. So ignore me if I slip the tongue a little bit. Um, so yeah, so today I decided to show you guys my updated face routine. I've been doing things a little bit differently recently, so all of my old videos, none of them have this face routine, um, especially from start to finish. So yeah, I figured it would be really great. I feel like my makeup recently has been super elevated. I'm loving the way it's looking in photos, and I learned a lot of my tricks from Harouche. I will link her YouTube below because she explains everything super well. But I just figured I'd show you guys what I've been doing. A lot of them are from her, so credit to her. She has great, amazing videos that are very detailed. Um, but I do use a couple products that are drugstore. I don't have everything prestige, so I'll show you guys how I do my version with a little bit of mix of prestige and drugstore so i figured that would be fun but yeah it's been working really really well for me i'm loving my photos my photos on instagram are getting way more engagement than before so yeah let's get started so first i'm gonna prep my skin um i'm gonna put i have some wrinkly under eye, not wrinkly but i got a little bit of lines under my eyes so I am going to prep my skin with a super smoothing radiance eye cream and this has a little bit of a uh, reflector in it so it is going to help brighten under the eye as well. I also had a pimple right here and it was one of those like really annoying painful ones so Excuse me. I wound up picking at my skin. I don't recommend doing that, but yeah, we're gonna take extra care of it and be sure to cover that up today. So, in addition to prepping my under eye, I am going to put a little hyaluronic acid on my face. And just make sure I'm super moisturized. I'm using this one from The Ordinary. So it is super goopy. It's like a thick hyaluronic acid. Some of the ones you get are a little thin, so they absorb really quickly, but this works really nice. So how have you guys been doing? I feel like I haven't been uploading as much as I'd like to, but I'm trying to get a little more consistent with it. I'm just going to use a little more because I want to put some on my neck. As for me, my life has been super ordinary, nothing crazy going on. I always laugh with my dad because he'll ask me like what's new and then he'll wind up asking me what's new like five times in the conversation because nothing's really new we're all in pandemic right now still so the only exciting thing is what's new on Netflix this week um, which I wind up watching in a day and then I have to wait for the next uh, Netflix release so that's my life so next I'm going to throw on a little bit of fresh moisturizer. This is the day cream and usually I like something heavier like a night cream but this is perfect. It's a nice heavy day cream. It's not going to leave you oily for when you actually want to use it during the day but yeah it works really really nice for under makeup I find and because sometimes you're if you don't put on anything underneath your makeup it can make you look a little dry and cakey so being moisturized is really going to help you look glowy and help your makeup sit 
sit. And I'm not going to use a primer because I feel like if you moisturize properly, you don't really need a primer that much. There are certain primers that are really good, don't get me wrong. Um, I just find I'm not going anywhere tonight. I'm just taking some photos, so I'm going to skip the primer step. So. Yeah, so now I'm going to let this sit. I don't want it to be too... I'm going to let it absorb a little bit. I'm actually going to put on a little bit of a lip mask. This is Fruit Butter Lip Mask by Seraphine. I got it in my Ipsy and I really like it. So my lips, especially this time of year, always need a little extra love. So I don't necessarily use this always overnight. I'll use it during the day as well. So. Beautiful. And if you are watching this and you like my eye look, I just used everything from the Morphe 35S Oasis the, um, eyeshadow palette. It's super simple, so if you want something similar, go right ahead and grab that palette. Okay. So one thing this week that's been going on with me is my Instagram has been growing like crazy the past week. I think in the last month and a half, I've gained like 10,000 followers, which I'm so thankful for. I love all of my followers. They keep me going. It really helps me. Um, my Instagram has really helped me to build confidence over the past few years. And now it's getting to the point where I can profit off of it a little bit as well. But really, I do it for fun. I love doing looks. I love creating fun outfits. It makes me feel beautiful. It makes me feel sexy. So my Instagram is a really big part of my life, and I love that community. But with that attention, I've also been getting some negative attention as well. And if you know anything about me or if you follow me on Instagram, I am a fat positive activist. And I say fat positive because it is different than body positive. Unfortunately, in the body positive community, a lot of thin white women have been coming in and taking up the space that originally was meant for women of color and fat women. Um, and unfortunately, it's kind of whitewashed and thin washed the whole the whole arena down and women who actually who started this movement are not getting the same attention number one and two they're actually being shunned out of their own space so we're kind of steering away from the body positive movement and focusing entirely on fat activism so i've really been speaking up more so than ever because um, I've just really felt like I, it's needed. Like there's still so much, not only internalized fat phobia, but systemic fat phobia out there. And I think that there needs to be more representation of bigger women out there that so people can see that you can live your life, you don't have to feel like you have to change all the time, you can be comfortable in your own skin as you are. And seeing that representation is really huge. It really is. I wish that there was more of that when I was growing up. So um, I really love what I do. So don't think that I'm complaining in any way, shape or form. But this week, week and a half. I've been getting a lot of hate as well. I'm um, starting to attract some of the naysayers and people who just want to say mean things. Like one person last week was like literally saying how they have to exercise and work out to maintain their body. So why should I be able to like live my life as a fat person? And once interesting is people people don't 
you can't look at someone and know anything about them. Like you can't look at me and know what I eat. You can't look at me and know what health look concerns or conditions I may have underneath it. You can't look at me and know whether I'm concerned with my health or not. You can't look at me and know whether I exercise or not. So it's just funny to me, not even funny, but it's just crazy to me that people um, get so bothered by what other people do. And you can hear the bitterness in that man's post that he has to work out every day so that he doesn't have to look like me is essentially what he was implying. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people who think that way, but one thing that I've learned through doing this for so long is that there's always going to be someone who's miserable in their own lives that wants to tear you down. And the reason that they're coming for you is as much as they don't want to admit it because you're a fat person, they want what you have. They want the confidence and the ability to live freely without being concerned about what other people think. And I know that sometimes it's easier said than done to not care what other people think. There are moments where I lose my cool at those people because, you know, it does hurt sometimes when people are coming at you or it's hard not to take it personally. But most of the time I don't. Like most of the time it doesn't bother me anymore because I know that that person is literally just miserable in their own lives. Um, so most of the time I try to give them the benefit of the doubt and I literally say something like I'm sorry that you're so miserable or that you're so upset in your own life that you feel like you have to come after mine um, but yeah so I've been dealing with a lot of that this week and the way that I deal with it myself is I try to unplug a little bit I don't unplug too much because I like I said I have fun doing this but when that happens I just take a step back and I just like to watch Netflix or listen to music and really zone out. So that's been my go-to lately just to get away from it all. So yeah, all right. I think that I think that I could get started with my makeup now. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is contour. So I have been using this trusty contour stick, and this is in Brazilian bronze. So I'm going to start with my nose, and I just take a um, crease smudge side of this like double brush. This is by Royal and Lang Nickel. And I'm just going to take a little bit on the brush. And then I like to start down here just because it tends to come off a little darker and I have a little bit of a round on my nose here so if I press too hard it'll not be straight so I, when I get to this part I like to loosen up just a little bit and then with the excess I'm going to drag it up and into my brow and what's funny is whenever I do my nose contour like I'm super crazy about making it really straight but then I watch these chicks on like TikTok or even on other YouTubes and they don't make it as super they're not quite as crazy or obsessive about making it straight as I am but the better you can do the better it'll look so I have a little mole here and <clears throat> I like to just kind of come a little in over it Okay. 
I like mine super, super snatched. So don't be afraid to go in nice and tight, but Like, see how I went a little too in there? That's okay. I'm going to fix that with concealer. So, before I do the concealer, I'm actually going to just put a little right here. Perfect. Okay. So what I do is I love um, Maybelline Fit Me concealers. I feel like they are a really good dupe for NARS concealers. And for my nose, like I don't like it to be super thick, but I do just take it straight from, this is like a pretty empty bottle, but I love when it's kind of empty. Like I feel like it becomes perfect for nose contour. And you can see I went a little too far over on the side, so I'm just going to correct that. going to go up here make a nice little fan there we go and this is where you can like correct the symmetry of that as well yes queen okay so I do just want to go back in forgive me if this isn't perfect it's hard doing this right into my camera but I'm just gonna go right in here kind of correct this like I said I'm a psycho about it being pretty straight and even Okay, so that's going to be good for me now. Next. I'm just going to blend out a little bit here. So now I'm going to take some my full Maybelline concealer and I'm gonna put a decent amount on the back of my hand and we want to always put this on the back of our hands because it'll warm up the concealer and actually I'm going to take a little bit of e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. This is in Fair Beige. It's a little lighter than what I would normally do, but it's just what I have. And I'm just going to put that dab on my hand and quickly cover up this little bad boy. I'm going to let that sit for a moment. While I do that, I'm going to start on this eye. So I'm just going to pick up some of the concealer. And I'm going to start at the bridge of my nose right here.
And then I'm going to drag underneath. I already put a little shadow on under here. So. Just going to lay everything where I want it. And then once I get that line down, I'm going to start bringing everything down in a downward motion. You don't want a super thick layer of concealer because that will really just show your lines. So I'm just going to do that nice thin veil. Looks nice. Now really quick before I get started on this side, I'm just going to pat that in. And I'm really just more so patting in the edges there. Now I can go in with the rest of the concealer. I'm doing the same thing. Going underneath my nose because I have a little redness there. I'm going to go over lash lines. I'm not really worried about these because uh, my foundation is going to cover that up. And I am just going to bring this up a little. I have a little bit of a smaller forehead and I like that it's smaller. So I'm not going to accentuate it too much, but this just gives me a little bit more. I don't know what it gives me, but it gives me something. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute and then I'll blend it out with a beauty blender. Um, just make sure that it's not like too heavy in any areas. Like see now I can see in my mirror over here that it's a little heavy there. But yeah, that's about I'm going to put a little on my chin right here too and just do like a little inverted triangle. Perfect. Okay. So now, bringing out this bad boy again. And I'm going to use the Sigma Kabuki. It's the 4D HD brush. And I just kind of coat the top. And I'm going to start right in this hollow here, but kind of go a little bit above it and just add. I don't like to go too far down. That's just my personal preference. I know some people like to bring it in, but I feel like this little divot there is just perfect for me. Same thing. And see like Applying it this way is starting the blending process. Instead of doing any lines or anything crazy, um, this is gonna make it so it's not too harsh, especially certain ones, like once you place them, they're so hard to blend out. So I'm just gonna trace into my hairline a little. Same thing, make sure you get into your hairline really well. That's what gives you away and you don't want to be able to see where your makeup stops and your face begins. 
And if you know where that is from, or if you've heard that recently, I should say, because I don't think that it's where it's from, but if you've heard that recently, you would know that I just got done watching uh, Ginny and Georgia, so. <laughs> okay, so now we're blending in nice and well. Look at that. You can see how it's starting to come together. Um, we're going to move on to the bottom portion of the face because if you thought that that was all the contour I was going to give you, you are mistaken, darling. So now I'm a plus size woman, so I want to have a snatched jaw, so I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to go right in right here. Oh my gosh, I have a hair on me. Hold on. Okay. So I'm going to go like right in under here. So I'm going to start there first, and then you'll see this trick that we love. So I'm just going to go right in here. You can already see where it's going, can't you? My robe was opening and I don't want to give you guys a free show today okay so again it doesn't have to be too much and it also if you go a little hard with it it's okay because we're gonna cover all this up with foundation so contour your little heart out so I'm just gonna go in right under my chin Next, I'm going to, to do right here just to elongate my neck a little bit. And it's like right on my hairline, so you really don't even see, not my hairline, geez. It's right like where my hair would land, so you don't really even see too much anyways. Just a little trick for you. Same thing on this side. Again, we're going to blend. Don't worry, don't worry. So now this step, this next step I'm gonna show you guys is the chain the game changer here. So again, I'm just gonna add a little onto my beautiful kabuki brush. Now if you want a really snatched jawline like this will do a little for you but this going right here on your ear like right there and bringing it all together mm. chef's kiss it is just like the best look at that difference over here we have who is she, you know, she's nice and snatched, right? Over here, we have crimson chin, okay? And I don't know about you, but I wanna be like full blown, like snatched, okay? So try that trick and let me know how you like it because it changes your life. So good. Adding it right along the hairline there. We'll just deepen that a bit. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to let that sit for a minuto. Okay, let's see how the concealer is going. So see, it's setting in my lines just quite a bit, just a little bit. So I'm just really quick going to pick up my concealer brush and kind of work it out a little bit more. I'm not dragging, I'm just kind of patting it in a little. There we go. Work it out, baby. 
this is not a beauty blender this is actually the new microfiber sponge from morphe and i was really excited to try it because i think it was nikki tutorials who showed it on her channel but i first saw it and it is big but it does a nice little job so i'm just going to pat out any wrinkle you want to make sure you get out all the wrinkles because when i put on my powder we don't want to set those wrinkles into place but also try not to mess up their contour at the same time Okay, I'm using two setting powders. You could totally just use one if you want, but I am using two. I have pretty much one half of Harusha's Secret Mix here. I don't have everything that she puts in because I don't have the Ben Nye powders, but I'm going to use a little bit of Huda Beauty, and I have Pound Cake. She does use banana bread in hers, and then I do have the Translucent Powder by Laura Mercier. And then I just sprinkle a little bit of those together, and I put it on either a napkin, or right now I'm just putting it on top of a palette. And I just mix them together now you're not gonna mix them together on a sponge I'm sorry but you're not gonna mix them together on a brush um, we want to mix them on a, either a napkin or some sort of surface so that they you get like an even amount of bulk and tap off any excess we don't want too much powder again if you have any lines under your eyes too much powder is going to accentuate them and we do not want that so see as I was talking I got a little bit of lines to work out here okay I'm really just focusing right here. I'm going to do some more powder once I get the rest of my face on, but just while I have this concealer on and I don't want it to get set too much in its way, I just went lightly right over the concealer. So now I'm going to go in with my foundation and I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible um, 24 hour fresh wear. 415 so I really love this foundation I've been using it for over a year the one thing I do want to say with this foundation is it does have SPF 15 25 in it which is great for everyday use you do want foundation I mean SPF for everyday use now you do want to make sure that you're adding foundation if you're going outside aside from your makeup because you're not putting on a whole mask of it and you do need SPF like a whole mask to protect your skin but if you're doing an event of some sort where there are going to be cameras taken or flash photography you do not want to use the infallible or anything with SPF in it now I am taking photos tonight but I find that like for my selfies with the um, ring light and I'm not using flash like I use the front filter for most of my photos so I feel like they wind up coming out okay um, but if you're going to be getting professional photos done flash photography make sure there's no SPF see now I'm getting messed up okay so I'm gonna apply Bitch. oh my goodness okay so I'm gonna apply my foundation I did put it on my blender beauty blender morphe blender whatever you want to call it and I'm going to start on the areas around the contour I'm gonna put the most product 
in these areas first. And now you can kind of start going over that contour. And just blending it all together. Drop in things over here. It's hard not to curse on here, though I totally do it. So now I'm going to go over my contour down here. Making sure I get my neck, my foundation slightly darker. Um, and this is for two reasons. One, this is my, what I usually use, like I'm at my winter's palest right now. I am like ghostly white. So this foundation matches me most of the year, but this time of year, not quite so much. I'm using 415, which I think is the beige rose. Yeah, rose ivory. Woo, that was wrong. Um, so this matches me most of the year. Um, and also this works for me on YouTube because when you do your like perfectly right color, most YouTubers um, use a foundation that's like slightly darker because it just winds up matching better on camera. But as you blend everything out, like you could see, it looks good. No worries. So again, just make sure you're getting this little spot here. Okay, perfect. So next, I didn't do my lips, so I am going to go back in, contour my lips a little. So I'm going around the outside. Whoa, that was an accident. Okay. And then So some people like to make this super defined, which I used to, and I do kind of do that sometimes with the actual um, liner when I put that on, but I'm going to round it out a little more. I just like the way that looks. It makes your lips look nice and full. So if you think we're done, we are not. You're gonna, I have a little lip product on, but don't worry, I'm gonna wash this. I always wash it before I do my face. And just kind of blend it onto your lip. So it's not like a harsh line. You don't wanna look clownish. And do the same with the top. Gorgeous. 
smooth a little bit of a deeper shade and these are the foundation sticks by Juvia's Place. And I just take this, put it down the center. I went in the other day to Ulta and I actually didn't see these. I don't know if they discontinued them or what. But that's sad if they did. So yeah, just doing that like right in the center there. And I like to do it like one in the middle one here, one here. And I feel like that just gives you like a thicker lift. Next, I suppose we'll go in with this baby. I'm gonna get a nice bronzer brush. Now, if you're thinking, didn't you just do all that contour? Why are you putting bronzer on? Another itch of my nose, sorry. Contour and bronzer are different. They're very different things, my dear. Bronzer is just going to be warming you up a little bit, adding some warmth to the face. Contour is typically a cooler color. And we do that to create and cast shadow. So this, I'm just giving my face back some warmth. And I'm going pretty lightly. I don't want like a crap ton of bronzer on. And I do just like to like trace under here once more. But I'm not going super heavy with it like I did with the contour. Blush time. So I'm going to be using flower, flower pots, and sorry, <laughs> I am using sweet pea, which is this one, and wild rose. I'm doing a double duo for you today. So I'm going to start with the sweet pea because this is our more muted shade. Super, super pretty. I'm just putting it like right above that bronzer and I'm not bringing it down. I'm not putting it on my apples or my cheeks or anything because I feel like it looks a lot nicer when it's like concentrated up. And then Just adding a dab of the wild rose. Same thing. So now I'm going to take a nice big fluffy brush. This is from Complex Culture. And I'm just going to blend all that out. Beautiful. Okay, so now you're probably like, what are you doing with this nose, right? I feel like it can be super intimidating um, dealing with this because, yeah, it just looks like a lot. I feel like you're like, you made these perfectly smooth lines. Now you're about to ruin them. So I'll show you what we do here. Now you've noticed that I let it sit for quite a bit, actually. I'm not gonna use that because it shows. Okay, I guess I'll go with this one. So I'm gonna I let this sit. I don't want it to move too much. I just want to conceal it now. So I'm going to take my foundation and I just add literally a drop. Just a drop will do ya. And then take a nice blending brush. And I go in circular motions. And I like to start up here because I want this part to be blended the most. Blend that baby out.
nice and natural now, right? You can still kind of see it. It's nothing too crazy, but it's nice and blended. So I think we're done. Think again, because we are not. So now I am going to do a few things. Bringing this bad boy out. This is really my nose contour friend. So um, I used Hula Caramel for my cheeks, but that's a little too dark for what I am going to be doing. So I am instead using Take Home the Bronze by The Bomb Cosmetics. And it's a very light and it's super, um, it's not orangey at all. It's an, actually an anti-orange bronzer. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this. Just like, I like use this baby so much. I'm like down to the pan. And it's in the shade Oliver. Sorry, I probably should have said that. Oliver, take home the bronze. So... I'm just going to dust off any excess and I'm going to very lightly retrace everything I just covered. But you'll see in the end why I do that. It just kind of gives it life again, but it's super natural. Next, I'm just going to take some of that mixture and right along where I put that concealer the first time, I'm going to pack on a little dab. Ooh, yes, I love it. I'm sorry. A snatch nose like this gets me so excited like this is what dreams are made of for me cut that baby Even if you're perfect at life and get your blend game down so that you don't need to cut it here, this is going to help us in a moment and you will see. Okay. Sorry. I get extra. I get excited about face stuff and contouring, you know? Okay. Next on the agenda, we're almost done, is... This is Max Studio Fix for me. I use NW20 and I'm just going to pick a little bit of this up and blend between the contour and the foundation. Just kind of marries everything together. pretty very pretty I am also going to once over and also blend out my under eye but also trying not to get that nose contour too much or same thing I'm not getting the powder under here I'm just going giving it a once over while I do that I'm going to highlight my nose now some people don't like a highlight or don't want to look like a glazed donut and I do but if you don't you can just trace over where you highlighted with some powder um, but since I want a highlight I'm not going to do that but one thing I will say is you have to pick one or the other my friends you may not use highlight and powder because if you do you're going to look muddy and we don't want that so i'm using it's 
limited edition. I say this in all my videos, but Snow Plush Extra Dimension Skin Finish by MAC. It's my holy grail. I love it so much. I haven't found anything like it, so I'm sorry if you like it too. From watching this video, write to MAC and tell them to remake it. I'm just going to add a little dab on my nosy. I actually shouldn't have done this yet. So first, before I do that, I'm going to pick up the brush that I applied um, powder on my nose with. I'm just going to, in circles, blend it out over the matte bronzer that I put on. But like, see the difference? See how I just blended all that in? Same thing. I'm so sorry that the lighting on my camera goes crazy like this. I'm hoping to get a new camera soon, just so I can have better quality. Now you may go back in with, and I'm just applying it with a brush, letting it sit, and then I just like kind of tap off the edges. Some people like to put a little on the bridge of their nose. I don't always do this, but dab can't hurt, right? And then I like to apply a little on my cheeks with my fingers. Gorgeous. Lastly, I'm gonna fix this up down here. I just blend this down to go over the bronzer contour for my, on like, your double chin. And that just helps, again, to diffuse the line down here. Excuse me, margaritas. So, when I go to apply my lip liner, I just go right over this. And I like to just like blend it out a little with the leftover foundation. And then just kind of like blend it with your lips. So when you trace over everything with your lip liner, it will stay very nicely. So I'm going to finish my look. I'm going to put on my lips. I'm going to put on my lashes and I'll show you guys the finished look. All right. Here's the final look. So you can see from near and far. It just looks so flawless, contoured, snatched. When I take photos with this, I feel like I'm looking really, really um, put together. But it doesn't look like too much either, I feel. Like you could definitely tell I have makeup on. I think my eyes give away more so that I have makeup on than anything else but if you were to do this with more of like a neutral eye it would look so flawless like you have a ton of makeup on in reality but it doesn't look any like anything crazy so yeah I'm feeling it feeling it let me know what you guys think is this a look that you would want to do is this too much steps wise for you because I could totally show you some easier looks as well uh, but this is like a full face beat without looking too oh this is like a full face beat without it looking like it's too much so I definitely think that this is my favorite this is my go-to routine for face lately I've been doing this the most I do it when I go for a more natural eye and I do it when I go for a full-blown fun and colorful eye look for glitter, glam, everything. So let me know. Let me know what you think. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I am a growing YouTube channel, so your support means absolutely everything to me. If you relate to what I was talking about earlier as far as um, about being a plus size woman or a fat person in America, I think many, many people understand what that feels like. Um, also, 
just trying to be a confident person. I think everyone can relate to that. So if you can, let me know below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really enjoyed this video. This is one of my favorite things to talk about is the face and contour. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you again. I love you so much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.